Shooters Connection offers products for competition shooters by competition shooters. With over 80 years of combined competition shooting experience, Shooters Connection is staffed by master and grandmaster shooters who live the shooting sports every day. Every day. We offer same-day shipping. Shooters Connection also sponsors over 100 of your matches every single year. So when it comes to finding everything you need to compete as a beginner or a seasoned grandmaster, Shooters Connection is the only name you need to know. Online at ShootersConnectionStore.com. What is up? We got the Hit Factor back finally after technological difficulties on my part last week. Really, Jeff and John Luke could have recorded mm-hmm. uh, without okay. me, but... Jeff would have had to, he would have had to say the intro part. And I think Jeff is scared of that part. Definitely. Uh, so he didn't, but we have guests this week. We do have John Luke of Rubens reloading. Um, the best bullet manufacturer on the planet. Bar none. Nobody's even close. You have, to, if you want to be the best, you have to buy his bullets. Damn. And we have the one and only Matthew Hopkins Hi. or Hoppy of fn usa employment now that's correct yeah. loving that uh matt is a production gm are you carry optics gm yeah carry optics production both okay and he's shooting carry out i assume you're still shooting mainly carry optics right now right now i am yeah i'm currently waiting to see what the board decides with the uh world shoot slot selection policy and then i'll decide what i'm mm. shooting after that Highly yeah. likely I go back to Ironsides, though. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I say I say you should. It's, this whole dot thing's a fad. It's going to go away. <laughs> Everybody's going to be shooting <laughs> irons again in five years. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, and John, Luke, uh, you are M class, and you shoot carry optics mostly? A class. A class? Sandbag. Who left? Who let an A class guy on this? <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, uh, yeah, in carry optics, um, but I didn't start there. I started in limited. So, are you still shooting your Gucci Glocks? No, no, stock, almost stock Glock thirty four. Have you shot uh, anything else? Yeah, so in when I shot limited, I shot a Tampo. Okay. And then uh, I dabbled with the shadow systems for a minute. Yeah. So why did you that choose was a the Glock? One where I actually... uh, well, I, I my first gun was a Glock. I just, I just, I don't know. I shoot it too well to not use it. Okay. Um, and it, it would take a lot of effort to to switch. I still so prior to the Glocks, I shot a stock two in production. And every once in a while, I actually put two bids on Gunbroker for, uh, for two stock twos. But one's for a friend. The other one's like, if I win, then I have it. <laughs> okay. Relive the glory days. Yeah. I sold the other one to a dear I was kind of asking because I, I have an opinion, but I haven't. Well, What's I've kind of experienced it a little bit that the weight of the guns matter more than the triggers. So like a okay. Shadow 2 versus a P10, for example, that I shot for a while. I think that matters more than the actual trigger system of the gun. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd probably be inclined to agree. I have a P10F, um, and I love it. And actually, out of the box, I shot it just as well as my Glock. But I'm, I'm kind of sucked into the, the ecosystem of Glock. I have too many mags um and uh the base pads that i use are used by they're made by strike industries they're like 15 bucks That's although they good. do make them for, they make them for the p10f as well so okay it would be a relatively easy transition i just don't know if i can wait for another six months for another holster it's worth the wait gx products holsters but uh i'm pretty impatient Understood. John Luke, you sound like the antithesis of Jeff Gothin. It's probably we, why we get along. <laughs> you 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 want to dabble with every gun ever made and and you'll buy it and try it and shoot it and then go back to something else. Back to the Glock. 
Because that's what back always, to the Glock. Yeah, that's what always happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and Jeff's just like, I want the cheapest gun that I can be competitive with, and that's, that's pretty much his only. That's another thing. I I can so this year I, I actually shot a GSSF match and I I won a Glock. That ended up being my backup gun. I was like, wow, if I can just keep going to these, you know, at least, you know, two or a year, I can just win my next year's gun. Yeah. That would be nice. I, I mean, the GSSF, though, I mean, like, you can you can do all right there. Yeah. Uh, don't talk to Jeff about that because Jeff will be like, wait, I can go win a gun here oh, yeah. and then I can sell it and make money. Ooh, Jeff's on to something now. That's why I'm staying in A class, so I can keep winning amateur. <laughs> oh, that's smart. That's smart. Now, once you become a master in USPSA, you're considered a master in GSSS. Oh, really? Hmm. And they limit how many guns you can win at that point, I think, right? I, I don't know about that. Um, I'm sure there is a limit. Uh but they give out a lot of guns. There was, so Oklahoma was the, the one that was run here in Oklahoma, uh, was huge. Was like, I think there was like 600 people. What? Um, but every match they give out, I think 60 guns. It's like top three of amateur and master in every division. Hmm. And there's, I think there's like 12 divisions or something like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure on the so, on the master divisions you can only win like one gun, and then they limit you, and they give you like I think they give you like credit for another match or some some small cash prize. Gotcha, gotcha. I think for a- amateur it's like three a year, which is you know, hmm. it's good enough for me. <laughs> That's not too bad. Yeah. And one of the stages was like a plate rack, so yeah, like the easy... whole stage is a plate rack. Yeah, just a plate rack. Yeah. It's timed, I think, right? Yeah, it's it's timed. So they it's five strings, and then they drop one. I think Let's start from low oh, ready. It's it's a, a very challenge. entry level, oh, yeah. like shooting sport. That's why I mean that's why there were six hundred people there because, I mean literally anyone who had it, you just have to bring a Glock. That's cool. And we do have Jeff Cawthon. I don't think I named him. Uh, yep. He's your... I'm here. Resident single stack GM. That's right. He's here. Right. He's still bald as ever. Yeah. How are those hair treatment things? Oh, yeah. Here we going? go. Follicle, follicle check right here. All I'm saying is it still looks real shiny on the forehead. <laughs> Someone clip that. Clip it. Yeah. Yeah. You should get a screenshot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get a screenshot. I bet Billy my scrub lord does. <laughs> yeah, someone's gonna make us a, a montage, right? Of my my head. Which speaking of Billy my scrub lord, he has a shout out from our Patreon uh this week mm-hmm. to shout out to Clarky Diesel. I don't know who Clarky Diesel is, but first place carry optics in the Northwest section of 2022. Nice. So good job. And then a Clarky Diesel. A party smiley emoji with a hat. And what are those things called? The little blowy things that go out and back? Kazoo? I don't know. It looks like a confetti yeah, like horn a, or something. Yeah, it's like a, a kazoo, kazoo with a flag on it or whatever. And then another party horn. You have to name yeah. all the emojis. Yeah, I I messed up on that, Billy. But Jeff yeah, got, got you back. back. And then our other shout out is from Jay Headland shooting. Shout out to Oreos for being delicious, and BAF Customs for all your moderately priced semi okayish running 2011 needs. Also, Captains of Crush for humbling gym bros everywhere. Yeah, there's been some people hitting those captains of crush in the Discord. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, that Jeremy's uh, agging them on. They're getting strong. trying to get them to to hurt their hands. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can get their tendonitis up. You know, if you can take out a few people just through injury, that's just a couple less people you got to yeah, beat at the There's max, more than right? one way to win this game. <laughs> there is. 
There very much is. All right. Uh, Puerto Rico Open. Or Caribbean. Caribbean. I'm sorry. Caribbean yeah. Open in Puerto Rico. Uh, how was that? How was the match? How was Puerto Rico? John Luke and Jeff, I was kind of getting some videos that you guys were hot tubbing together and there was other stuff going on. I don't know what all happened. The wives were at home. So Jeff really knows how to Jeff, you guys. Jeff knows how to wine and dine a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean a man. Like the, so to a give man. a little so <laughs> Jeff I can't speak for I the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I, I feel like at this point, I have been replaced as Jeff's travel agent uh, because Jeff cannot plan for himself for a match. And then I come to find out for this one, like John Luke literally planned everything. <laughs> Jeff literally just had to show up at an airport. And even then, he got there and he couldn't get his ammo packaged right. And so he ends up at the match with no ammo. I don't even know what he don't did. No, dude, I didn't even uh, have to show up at the, the airport. Match. I just went to his parents' house, and then they took it from there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We even got a we got a ride to the airport. So yeah. Oh my gosh. And just to be clear, while we were at my parents, I offered Jeff a suitcase <laughs> to put some of his stuff in because we knew he was overweight already. <laughs> It's true, yeah. That's Jack, is that. this the first first match you've flown to? Second, but okay. it's the first match I've flown to with an overweight bag. Well, you, I mean, you didn't actually fly to with the overweight bag because they took all that's the right, out of yeah. It, right? <laughs> yeah, it took four hundred rounds. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so how it worked is we went to weigh in. I'll go ahead and give you the number because it's ridiculous. My bag was sixty six pounds. <laughs> And, and they were like, okay, well, that's going to be an extra $100. And I was like, okay, I'll just pay it and so I don't have to worry, you know, deal with this. And then I paid it, and then I went to go do the security check, TSA check, and they said my name over the, the loud system, the intercom, whatever. I could have no idea what they said. I just heard my name. So I asked the TSA lady, and I was like, what they say? And she's like, I don't know. And I was like, okay, so I'll just go back. So I ran back down there, and there was a guy standing there waiting for me with my bag. And he was like, hey, your bag's overweight, and uh, you got a ton of ammo in here, dude. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. And he's like, yeah, so there's a rule. It's like 11 pounds. And I was like, yeah, I know. And uh, he's like, all right, well, I'm going to take it out and weigh it. I was like, okay. He's like, I, I I'm pretty sure you're going to be over. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be over. There's 24 pounds of ammo in there. I know exactly how much it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they took 400 rounds from me, left me with 200. Because if you don't know, three boxes of 40 is 12 pounds. So you get two boxes if they weigh it. Anyway, so they took all. Wait, you couldn't just take out like 10 rounds out of the third one to make it. 11 so you got he's got two yeah you probably do that um i've had to do that before no i did not do that um i was i was beyond (laughs) thinking about that jeremy um okay anyway so they they pulled it out and when they pulled everything out my bag was now 50.5 pounds and uh i was (laughs) she was like um She's like, okay, 50.5. And I was like, so you're still considering that overweight? And she was like, yep, 0.5. And I was like, okay, well, wheel it over here. I'll grab some T-shirts out of there. And, uh, and then she was like, uh, no, don't worry about it. And I was like, okay, well, I want a refund if, if we're not going to do the overweight bag anymore. Give me my $100 back. Uh, so I got my $100 back, but I lost 400 rounds <laughs> Of, uh, What'd you ammunition. do with the ammo? They took it to the sheriff's department. Yeah, they said I could wait around. Did, Did you, you get it told back? Me that no, I know someone at the sheriff's department. Well, they told me Did I had to wait there, back? like I had to wait there. Oh, not for the sheriff, but if I wanted someone to come get the ammo, I had to sit there with my ammo. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was like, no, I got a flight to catch, so just do what you're gonna do with it. And then I got on the plane. 
and we found it wasn't that bad. We found bullets in Puerto Rico. Yeah. How much did you have to spend on the ammo to buy it down there? Uh, I spent, I think, $112. So it equaled out, basically. $112 for, but I didn't get as much. Like, I only bought another 200 rounds. So I had 400 rounds. And then another guy let me borrow borrow he gave me like another 100 rounds because he wasn't staying for the shoot off afterwards so nice uh, it wasn't perfect i think i had two or three malfunctions from that ammo that wasn't mine uh, my gun is a little finicky but anyway mm-hmm. that's how the trip started but we made it there that was one long ass day I'll tell you that, because I left my house at, I think, 6 o'clock that morning, and we were walking into our hotel room at 2.30 or 3 the next morning. Yeah. Uh, we waited, like, an hour and a half for our rental car. Yeah, an hour and a half, two hours, oh, and nice. then also we sat in our second flight uh, in Dallas, we sat in that plane for two hours while they de-iced it before it ever took off. So every yes. every flight before that though was canceled. Like yeah, to Dallas and then like from Dallas to Puerto Rico, everything was canceled. So we were the first flight to actually make it out. So I'm I'm thankful for that. I mean, yeah, it could have been a lot worse. We could have yeah. never actually gone. And. For that six hours in that plane, I ended up sitting right behind uh, Bob Crow and and Billy. They were in the the seats right in front of us. It was a huge plane, so that was a nice coincidence. It has to be to fit Bob and Billy. Yeah, they didn't have they didn't have uh, seats in front of them. Like they they had the oh. seats right in front of the emergency exit. Yeah, so they had all the leg room, which they needed. That's good for Bob. Yeah. He needs it. She does too. Crap, she's six yeah. feet tall. But it was awesome. The, I mean, the, it went pretty good. Other than all that, you know, it wasn't bad. But yeah, so you get there. Uh, Enrique brings you umbrella drinks on the beach. Yeah. All that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, sure. What? Like, I mean, I hear, I hear from everybody that goes there that like the match is just awesome. It's lots of fun. Like. You guys agree with that? What do you want to go first, John Luke? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm inclined to agree. I think the stages were really well designed. Um, it was a different flavor. It's always nice to, to try something new. Uh, I think they so it was a mix of IPSC and USPSA. So you didn't actually have to. Mm-hmm. Um, you didn't have to use new equipment because Glock 34 wouldn't be legal in IPSC because uh, it's too long. Um, but they didn't. Yeah. They allowed you know your USPSA shooters to use their normal equipment. I was even allowed to run base pads. It was just limited to 15 rounds, and then everything behind the hip. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, so as far as the actual match goes, super well run. Uh, Katya was the match director. She did a phenomenal job. Um, and the atmosphere was very friendly. Except for one stage. Yeah, that's cool to hear. <laughs> Except for one stage, which was run by a rather infamous American that no. didn't think that thought Jeff was cheating. Well, that, yeah, that. I mean, I don't know how deep we want to get into that, but. <laughs> Way deep, <laughs> no. because now I'm interested. <laughs> I don't know if we can. Uh, no, one stage, I, I was, I've never called for an overlay. And if there was ever a time to call for an overlay, this is the time to call for one. Uh, and uh, the, oh, RO, yeah. okay. the RO yeah. called me uh, a bad word <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And as if I like wouldn't understand, like everyone knows the word. I'm not going to say it, but. Uh, can you not cuss on this? No, it can. Then say what he I said. Just, I just yeah, personally he, don't. Jeremy, if I can, Jeff, say what he I, said. 
<laughs> Didn't he say bitch in Spanish? Yeah, he called me. That culo? Uh, puto. Well, puto. So it's puto, yeah. yeah. And and it, as if I know, so my background is I'm half Filipino, but everyone thinks, everyone thinks I speak Spanish. And this guy oh, yeah. like straight up said it so that I could hear it. So I was a little taken aback that like he would say something like that. Uh, just like straight up. Yeah. He's like, yeah, that's like weird. Mike, bitch. <laughs> yeah. And, he, and the way he like pulled out his uh, overlays was like, <laughs> well, I guess. <laughs> and uh, it was, but it was, it was that close. And it was, I mean, it was, the, it was a Delta or a Mike. And almost the whole bullet was, or the whole hole was in the area outside of the perf. It was as close as you could get without action. And, I, and I'll admit, I thought it was a mic. But for the sake of the experience, I was like, I'll call for an overlay. Just I've never done it before. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty subjective at times. It's supposed to be objective. I feel like. It's 100% subjective. Yeah. When it's, a half, when it's a half round like that or a quarter round, yeah, it's total, that one is yeah. subjective. Yeah. Um, so like I he didn't even call it yet and I was like all right it's a mic so I just started walking away. Um, I forgot who someone does someone on a podcast does that where they like they call for an overlay they walk away and usually that's uh, supposed to... that's what Jeff says he does. <laughs> it's usually a way to make the person feel good like oh I didn't like I don't care or I didn't want it if I asked for it or something. Right. It, Asking for overlays is fine, I think, honestly. An RO Part should the, be totally comfortable yeah. with doing it and not getting an attitude about it. Yeah. No matter where they're at. I yeah. wasn't challenging his manhood. I was just <laughs> challenging his call. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that uh, for my from my match perspective, that was uh, the only time. I felt uncomfortable, but other than that, like everything else blew me out of the water. Um, I don't know yeah. if we want to get into the ceremony yet, but as far as the we'll get there, well, hold on. Did you get the call? No. Did you get the hit or no. not? <laughs> you take it to the as RM? Soon as he oh. Huh? Pull it. Pull it. No, no. I, I, I was <laughs> tempted just to spite him. I was like, you know what? Even I think it's a my Like it's as close as it's as close as can be. Um, and I'm not, and I'm not there to win, right? I'm there for the experience, uh, and it wouldn't have made a difference. I even uh, what if did on practice score? It's like, well, whatever. Yeah, Jeff, was it a hit or a miss? Uh... Jeff didn't watch me shoot at all. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. What? I don't, I honestly don't remember it that close. Like I looked at it, but I don't remember. I didn't look at it that close. I was just like, oh, yeah, it's close. Call for an yeah. overlay. The thing is, uh, someone on our squad had <clears throat> had or also called for an overlay on the same stage, I believe on the same target. <laughs> uh, oh. And uh, I, I want to say they didn't get it either. So Was that before or after your call? After. After, okay. So they just had to be consistent. Yeah, well, I respect that. I don't respect yeah. what he called me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a little. Uh, yeah, that's not great. Yeah, we don't need that. Uh, so, yeah. this was you guys' first time experiencing Ipsic, where you cannot run outside of the uh, right. shooting area. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's kind of one of the big differences as far as stage design. For what they have down there versus USPSA. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, that's Jeff, fine. I want to take this one. Yeah, it wasn't. I There's only was one stage. Terribly, yeah. I didn't. It didn't change things terribly at this match. It wasn't. There's one stage where it was like a the uh, shooting area was like a Y shaped, and you could jump mm-hmm. from one side of the Y to the other. And what I tried it, and. I mean, you could do it. I think I, I, I like, half, while you were shooting. 
You just tried it yeah. beforehand with the walk. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with doing the walkthrough, like I half, I was like, I'm gonna half ass this and see if I can, I can do that. Uh, yeah. And I, I did it on the half ass, and then when I actually tried, I almost biffed it in the walkthrough. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There was there was three of us that were experimenting with it, and it was a no go. <laughs> we didn't try it, but it it was all right. It was fun. Yeah, there wasn't. Uh, I think JJ had a had one where he like fell out of bounds and then ran forward and then backpedaled. And is there some rule about touching the ground? I've never heard that. Oh, you he, have to I mean, like go he, make that, contact. So yeah, he he posted the video because he went back like halfway to where when he where he jumped out, and then he like yeah he didn't fall out. He just he just forgot what he was doing. And he just ran outside. No, the I think he tripped shooting and fell. Area. I think he was just off and balance and running down. Uh, okay. it, did, it looked pretty then, innocent to me. It didn't look like it was on purpose. Yeah, it, uh, it was like he tripped or fell or something, and then he just ran back and jumped back in, and then he realized it and he ran back about halfway, and touched the ground. I didn't know there was like a touch the ground. I've thing. never heard that. Have you, Jeremy? Well, I think I think the what he was trying to do was he was trying to re-enter where he kind of where he left the shooting yeah. area so that he wouldn't have gained an advantage right. uh, by running outside the shooting area. So that was what he, he was trying to reestablish uh, himself. Yeah, but I think you can, I think you can run back to where it was also and like touch the ground with your feet. You don't have to like touch your hand on the ground or anything like that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. see him. He touched his hand. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that saying. part. He like, he like, I didn't know well, he, he backpedaled. Yeah, he like backpedaled about halfway up the stage. And then he went down and he like touched the ground with his hand and then just like went, kept going forward. It was, it was strange. Maybe he's been run, doing like a bunch of like lines. Yeah. yeah some suicides. Like lines where you got to touch the ground. Isn't that so how JJ trains. Just a training scar. It's like, right. Yeah. Just, just cone drills all the touches. time. Just like, oh. Plyos. Yeah. You know, agility drills. <laughs> he was just showing yeah, off. Yeah. Somebody can correct us on that. That. <laughs> showing off. Yeah. Yeah, somebody can correct us on that, but I don't. I don't know why he would touch it. The, I thought he was picking up no. a mag or something. Like he had not dropped a mag or something. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why he would touch the ground with his hand. But maybe uh, Ipsit guys, if there's a rule that we're missing, uh, you guys can let us know. But I'm yeah. not aware of it. Yeah, I don't know. But it wasn't. So you shoot the match. Uh, it's all staff reset, right? No. So you no, guys don't have to do nothing. It was not staff reset. <laughs> no. Oh, it was not staff reset. It's probably oh, okay. my only gripe, and that's like kind of pushing it. It's like I actually have become very accustomed to staff reset. I'm starting to. I feel like I'm. I'm too bougie now. How have you gotten accustomed to staff? Oh, reset? I I went to one match, and I was like, "This is awesome. <laughs> I can actually. <laughs> oh, I can okay. actually, you know, go through my stage plan. You know." 15, 20 times in my head instead of pasting. Yeah. Do you think that makes you help, helps you shoot better? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I think it does. I think it helps solidify uh, a subconscious stage plan. Nice. Well, yeah, there you go. Yep. Uh, so you shoot, and Jeff made it into... Into the shoot offs for standard yeah, shooting. Yeah. Uh, so, by the way, the, the RO that thought Jeff was cheating was our president. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he called. He Finally. called. He called the RM over to uh, check that uh, Jeff was because he was shooting ten rounds with a single stat gun, but Jeff was actually competing in standard because nobody was shooting it. But instead of asking Jeff, "Hey, are you shooting?" Are you shooting single stack or standard? Uh, he called the RM over to, to double check on it. I don't know why. That doesn't make sense. Just ask the shooter, like, what division are you competing Jeff is in? super intimidating. But haven't you? I mean, he, you know, he's virtually unapproachable like, on a range. If you do, there's a good chance yeah. you'll get cussed at and yelled at. Like, it's like I a permanent lap spread. Really, like, yeah, that's how, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. <laughs> well, now that Jeremy has name dropped Emin, I was not. I didn't say that. Yeah, say you did. 
You said the, you said the our president. president. I said president. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was not going to. I wasn't even going to bring that up. It just, I don't know. It, it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't really seem malicious. But at the same time, I was like, I mean, I would probably would have handled that a little differently. But still, yeah. Anyway, I wasn't gonna name drop him, but I don't think it's malicious. I just think it's funny. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was a. Uh... Yeah, I didn't think there was mal intent there, but he. So what happened was I shot, and the first position was eleven shots, and I was shooting major. And so I shot my 11 shots. I had 10 round mags because I'm shooting standard. And I shot. They scored it and everything. And then, like, the, I guess it was the range master just, like, pulls up and goes over to you, man. And he's like, I just hear him talking, like, really quiet. He's like, uh, what's, what's the rules for classic? <laughs> And uh, they talked about it and stuff. I don't even actually know. I think it might have been Bob that said that I was shooting standard. Because uh, I like they Probably like they never asked like me. Uh, but somehow, <laughs> like, were they somehow scoring with tablets I was or what? There. Yeah, they were. You were changed in the tablet though, also, right? Yeah. So they. Yeah. But I had multiple, so rather than calling the RM, yeah, we could have looked people. in the tablet and figured it out. Matt, that'd be too easy. There's also oh, that sorry. solution. Yeah, but there, I had multiple. I mean, I'd rather take the time to, to call RM me. and have him wheel up than ask the competitor or look in the tablet. Also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That there's, there's, it's funny. Uh, so Jeff shot Jeff shot fairly well. I mean, he made the shoot offs. Yeah. That yeah. was your first. What fi- time hold on, to what finish did you get right? in standard? Fourth, right? Fourth. Shooting yeah. ten round mags. Yeah. yeah. Which standard was only fifteen 17. rounds, correct? No, yeah, it was seventeen. Oh, they let him have seventeen. Yeah. Okay. It's not much of a disadvantage. It's, yeah, so there was just a few stages where I had it. One or two extra loads, and well, where it really got me was probably the the stages where you had to stow like the 12 round stages where you had to load off a barrel. Yeah. Those are the ones that got me and really fucked me up. I don't know. You killed on the, on the one like four corner stage where you didn't have to go to four corners. Yeah. Looking at the video, I didn't even know that you had the mag stowed like this. Yeah. I just held it. Yeah. Yeah. And then like all of a (laughs) sudden you're like, you had more ammo and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> you did a Rob Latham? You held, just held it in your weekend? Yeah, I just held it on the front of the gun, like right here, while I was shooting, and then I just dropped and stuck it in and ran back. Yeah, on one of the stages. It looks but sick. that was after I had, like... Have you practiced that? Uh, I did a little bit, actually. Yeah. It wasn't that natural <clears throat> athletic- athleticism. But the good part was, like, people didn't even notice that I did it. That was the good part. Yeah. Um, but that was right after I had screwed one up really, really bad. That was like an <laughs> off the table <laughs> barrel start. It was like, it was so bad, dude. Like I, yeah, I won't go into it. It was just really fucking bad. You, you gave up halfway through and then, <laughs> and then yeah. started. Yeah, I literally the- like started walking and I was like, oh, well, <laughs> And then I was like, oh, wait. So then I grabbed a mag off the ground, and that one was empty. So I went and grabbed another one. Yeah. Oh, was- no. But you got fourth overall. Uh, Even yeah. With a- we made the shoot off. And yes, this was my first shoot off. And it was amazing. Everyone should do shoot offs. It was so fun. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Shoot offs are really cool. Yeah. And they did the shoot off. Um, well, I want to say two things. First, the, the only real issue that I had with the match was probably the officiating and it wasn't terrible, but there were stages where like some of the ROs didn't 
really know how to make the calls correctly. Like on uh, like a no shoot type target where it maybe hit both targets or where they had two no shoots and then like a hit. Like I saw probably like three of those called incorrectly. And uh, obviously I'm not going to correct an RO. I'm, oh, well, wow. I'm just not going to do it. But uh, yeah, so I saw a few of that through those just just little things like that. There was one guy that like wouldn't let me repaint steel on a stage. I was like painting steel every day. And then he was like, so we're not, we're just going to paint them at the end. I've actually experienced that also in European handgun championship in Hungary. They said it was an unfair right. advantage that if you painted the steel for every shooter, like your squad would have an advantage over other squads. I didn't understand at the time. I still don't understand that because the first shooter on the yeah. squad that gets a shoot on that stage, basically randomly gets an advantage. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. Make but sense. how do they determine if, like, if if you a have plate. a hit on a still, but it doesn't fall? They were played. Yeah. They oh, were it's played a plate. It's not calibrated. It okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I still don't understand why you would anyway allow unless you're trying to. I think they always one of those. Keep the stage moving, which doesn't make. That's sense. that's what they did at EHC. They basically the steel was like twenty yards down. And the mud was 12 inches deep, and to walk down there and back every time would just slow the stage down so much. But you had to reset it wasn't the staff steel, reset. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was. No, no, no. Our, ours wasn't staff reset, so it's like oh. we're going to put the steel up, <laughs> and then we would paint it, so it's not a big deal. They get weird with that. Yeah. Um, it's, anyway. Oh, just, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Bob completely ignored that guy. <laughs> And painted the steel the whole time. I Bob and Billy and, like, dude, are the best. This, this was the best part. Yeah, this is the best part. Is that dude was ROing, and while he was ROing, Bob would stand like right over there by him and shake the paint can, <laughs> <laughs> just like ding, 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 ding. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Bob really is is the best. And Billy. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with them. Yeah. They're both awesome. I, I love that Billy made sure that the stage was, like, everything was pasted. Like, because black pasters were, like, non-existent. So, like, anything with hardcover, mm-hmm. like, it was a whole production to get a black paster. And she, like, went through every single one. I was like, that's the best. Just making sure that Bob's going to have the cleanest run he could possibly have outside of his actual shooting abilities. Yeah, the best part of squatting with Bob, yeah, is having oh, yeah. Billy. She gave, me, she gave me a because like, Billy. She gave me like takes a protein care of everything. bar. Uh, halfway through the match, I was like, I don't have anything to eat. She's like, from a bag. She's like, pick anyone you want. <laughs> that's. that's <laughs> yep, that's Billy. Yeah, she, they're awesome. Mm-hmm. So, so then and then Bob proceeded to kind of kill you in the finals yeah. of the. He shoot-off. was fully like, he had found his groove by then. He had already whipped like three or four people, and I think I actually had two, like, like the two people I was supposed to shoot to start with weren't there, and then and then oh. I beat one person. And then, by, so the, by the time I got to Bob, he had already beat like four people, and he was feeling pretty good, I think, and pretty confident. And uh, yeah, and then he just mopped the floor with me, pretty much. But I did get to the final, so I don't even care. It was awesome. Yeah, no, that's Bob's going to be a lot of people, especially the way that shoot off was yeah, set I up. Like the plates set were up. just it stacked in nice. a row. So like you had to like double tap a couple of them. Yeah. And then if you shot one extra, you like knock the stop plate down early. That was pretty interesting. There's even a time where both sides faulted because they hit the stop plate. Did they reshoot it or DQ them? They reshoot. They reshot okay. it. I think. Yeah. It was PC. They only reshot it because because they couldn't figure out how to call it correctly. That's true. That's true. But the overall like vibe of the ceremony was like. And the shoot off was like 
This so, is only for fun. Did you guys shoot stages yeah. before that happened? Or was it like the next day after you guys were done shooting stages? Or how did that work? So it was it was that afternoon. Like we finished the match. We shot 10 stages. And then we all sat down and we had a huge lunch and hung out for like an hour. And then like everybody was in the shootout, like put their belts back on. And the shootout was like right there where we ate. It was it was pretty cool. Like you could sit at the table you ate at and watch a shootout or shoot off. Um, so that was really cool. But yeah, it was it was right there all in the same day. One of the probably my favorite thing about the whole match was the uh, the festivities afterwards. It was like, you know, you go to a, ma- a lot of matches in the U.S. And it's like they're trying to go as, qu- as quick as they can so they can get, get people home and whatnot. And this was like, no, we're here. This is what we're doing today and, and probably till later tonight. Um, and it, it just changed like the whole atmosphere that everybody was there just to have a good time. And when they called the, the awards, it was like a freaking party every time they called somebody's name and they went down. And, uh, there was a lot of dancing and, yeah, theatrics. It was, it was pretty great. And then they brought out – there was a bar there that was a pretty cheap bar as well. It was like $1.50 beers. And then they brought out um, some rum moonshine. And they just had it sitting out there, and you could just like go up and take shots for free. Did anybody get completely uh, crazy? So, I'm sure they did. Nobody that I I know got completely crazy. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff is the person that got crazy. <laughs> there was only yeah. there was only one guy yeah. who got crazy, and it was the guy who spilled the beans during the match about the moonshine. He's like. We have this local moonshine that we're gonna bring oh, out. Yeah, that he guy, actually yeah. got blitzed. Like, but every <laughs> everyone was having yeah. a good time. Uh, yeah. But he had been thinking about yeah. it all day. Yeah. So you guys shot ten and stages he, Saturday, ten Sunday, <laughs> and then the shoot off and awards were Sunday afternoon and night. After lunch. Right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was a big. We were time. done, big and it was time. still light out, so it wasn't like yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, and then we spent the rest of the evening out, out on the town. It was a good time. Well, it sounds like a, a fun match. I'm sorry I wasn't wasn't able to attend this. All year. right, we talked a lot of shit about Bye. you. Probably, probably well deserved. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy, how many Just people did real. you convince probably to go and then not show up? <laughs> Jeff, Ruben, Billy, uh, uh, Bob, <laughs> Bob and Billy, Niels and Jessica. Uh, yeah, we were traveling. I was tra- I was gonna be traveling with, with all of them, uh, and splitting a rental car and stuff with them. Luckily, we ended up. We had already decided to all get hotel rooms rather than an Airbnb. So that at least like they right. weren't that didn't really change their cost too much on that, luckily. Uh but yeah, it's kind of a bad deal. Luckily I hadn't convinced like like I had talked to Poji about it, flying from Seattle to go shoot it. I had talked a little bit about my buddy from Switzerland. Uh and well to possibly go shoot it, but he they didn't, so that's at least good. That would have felt. Then I would have felt. I probably would have gone at that point if it had, if they had been going. I'm probably like, yeah, I have to go. I'll just use a credit card. And Next year you have silly, to. Go. You just weren't. Co- you have to go. You just weren't committed enough. Yeah, we'll look. And at, it wasn't that expensive. We'll look at it for next year. It really wasn't. I mean, well, that was part. Of, that was part of the deal is that we were turning. If it if it uh-huh. was just a match, that was one thing. But the wife wanted to turn it more to like a week long. It was like a week long deal. And that got that got a lot more expensive uh, at that point. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll look at it for next no, year. No, I'm going to peer pressure you into going. All right. Again. That, I'm a little fine. salty about 
Yeah, I, was, I mean, you, I, you guys laid it on pretty thick. Finally realized that you were just pulling my leg the whole time. I was a little salty about it. A little. Yeah. Did, did you know he thought that you were serious when you said, Katie said, I can go? Oh, no, I, was, I did not yeah, know. I, I thought you were jazzed. serious. Oh no! Yeah, and then he messaged me like I think it was days later, yeah. and he was like, "So Jeremy's not going?" And I was like, "No, he's not going." <laughs> I was just so pumped. Uh, John Link, most everything I say, yeah, I almost that. ever, is sarcastic. I mean, Bob, Bob uh, is the same way. And I learned very quickly that you two are very yes. much alike. There, there's there's a few similarities there uh, between the two of us. He's just a better, more talented shooter than I am. Other than that, there's a lot of similarities. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, we have, I don't know how late we'll go, but there are new rules and new all sorts of stuff. Yeah that have come through the pipeline from USPSA. We've got limited optics, provisional division, and we've got. No, it's not. It's not. It's provisional no. now, isn't no. it? Oh, it's not provisional yet. Oh, okay. So we brought Hopkins on to be our rules expert uh, because I haven't, I haven't kept up with everything that's going on, obviously by Hopkins correcting me. So there. I think if anybody <laughs> would have put money on, Limited optics such being a, a division or not, it. they like if they put not, they would have lost money af- out of this going into the meeting, right? It was almost a for sure thing. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. So basically, they reviewed limited optics. They reviewed the survey results. <clears throat> they talked about it. They're going to go refine the division. They're going to set some goals up for it. They're going to talk about. Um work on evaluating the metrics, setting the high hit factors for it, getting practice score able to implement it before it can go live. And then basically they're going to talk about it again at the November or February 28th board meeting. So I fully expect them to vote on it then at that point. So a week or so it's happening. It's 100% they're doing all that. It's happening. Yeah. So they saw that there was a 51% people that said that we should have it. So that means. Well, 51% of the people that voted. 5% of the total membership. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I I think, uh, yeah, I don't really trust those stats. Uh, Because I think a lot of people were like, I mean, I could go and vote and I could fill out their questionnaire, but it's really going to be completely irrelevant if I fill it out or not, because they're just going to do whatever they want to do anyway. Mm. I think there's a bit of uh, that going on. 51% is a, is a convenient number. So, uh, (laughs) right. It is. It's a very convenient number. Leave it at that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know it was five yeah, percent. Very convenient. I mean, the board's done it to themselves. The board's done it to themselves uh, in that people don't trust them, and so any sort of stats or anything like that that they come out with, people aren't going to trust. And I think the board's kind of got to own that a little bit. I mean, you're right. In my opinion, mm. absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. twenty five hundred and ninety one people voted. Uh. 91, 25, 91. And if we have what's 37,000 members, 7%. So 7% of the organization voted that they want it. So 93% either does not want it, depending on how you interpret it, or doesn't care. Now, if we use the same yeah. logic they used with the bylaws, nice. that 93% would mean that they don't want it. But now now they're saying Ooh. that that 51% oh, that voted. That's true. 
do want it, so we have to do it. Oh, that's. Uh, well, I mean, they just change how they're interpreting their it based on what they want to do with it. Yeah, hence people just don't. That's why people don't vote because they're just gonna do whatever they want. So who cares? Yeah, I'm curious what it'll do. I, I, I don't, I don't honestly, I don't. I really am totally baffled why anybody would vote for a new division that is simply a duplicate division of what we already have. Like it's, it's the exact same division as carry optics. There well, is no, th- you have, you no can't say it's exactly there's the no same. Nothing. It's the same division. Okay. So okay, there's two differences. They don't allow the major, major power factor. Pole. And then magwells. Magwells are huge. Okay. Yeah. Well, Magwells are huge, not really when it's a 24 round division and you might you might have to do one reload. No matter what, it's it's a seven it's a reloads on a 10 component stage match. that makes it easier to reload a gun. Now, is it as big as major and minor? Probably not. It, is it as big as iron sights versus optic sights? No, not at all. Yeah, but is that worth a, a new know. division for like just if, a Magwell? If they I'm proponent of they should set divisions up with less rules and have them more open. So optics, irons, comps, no comps, magwells, no magwells, major, minor, like determining those and like putting a chart out there. Like, oh, is it have a magwell? Does it have an optic? Is it frame? Is it slide mounted or frame mounted? Like, oh, there's a division. There's division. Like, does it make sense that way? Yeah, Just if, very I, I think rules. you can narrow it down to six. That would incorporate yeah. a lot of everything that we have. Now we could use the same names or not, but that's kind of up to up to other so, people. I don't really care. I think the funniest thing is the frame mounted optics. Yes or no? As a as a poll, thirteen point five five percent of the people that voted on this wanted to allow frame mounted optics. What? <laughs> I mean, yeah. that just shows who's voting on those polls. Uh, so they just want to shoot. Like they want to shoot minor a comp. Is that? But there's another thing that says like 42 yeah. percent of the people that voted think that it should allow major and minor, and 57 want minor only. So <laughs> I think there's some definite oh, troll so factor going only. on to this that they can't interpret like interpret from the results <laughs> right and how many of those people how many of that 51 percent that voted for it voted for it because they want it to be a shit show i mean you, you'll never tell that you'll never be able to tell that I, I, yeah i mean that, there's that's definitely the some factor, trolling right? factor in here no you sure. can't tell that but but you know in your heart matt you know <laughs> you know in your heart <laughs> yeah matt i don't disagree with you that that we there's there are ways that we could simplify the divisions a lot but they're not doing that so then the problem is we've created a duplicate division uh, assuming it's going to be minor because i i would be if they went major with this division it would just it would no i would i really the think they're the still evaluating and it's still a, uh, a real possibility that it'll be major minor I'm dead serious. I heard a podcast last night shoot. and this morning where a board member was on there and said that they are still looking at major minor because the old 40 guns can be cut and had an optic put on them and use those guns. Which I think goes against okay. the whole proposal on this. The whole proposal okay. was what the staccatos or MPA Single action, 2011, slide ride, shooting minor power factor yeah. ammo. If they don't do that with this, that right, crazy. I, I don't even know what. Like, it won't surprise me at this point, honestly. Will it surprise you? No, no, it, it won't. <laughs> no, I mean, no, not from them, because because they are tone deaf to 
to everything. Like literally everything I think they're tone deaf to. But it is a but as it is, I'm going to operate under the assumption that somebody in that room will say, Hey, everything is nine millimeter now. We don't need a major division uh, for this. So it's assuming it's minor. It is a duplicate division to carry optics. As far as the results will show, it is a duplicate division. And so, yeah, let's, if we need it, if it is a duplicate division, then take the magwell off or add the magwell to carry optics. Cause quite frankly, a 140 millimeter mag with no magwell is the height of stupidity in my mind. It's like, we can't, we can't have a magwell cause it's a carry gun. But we're gonna have a freaking magazine that sticks out three inches out of the bottom of the gun. But I, I, you have forbid, to the gun like, suspend disbelief if further. you still think carry optics uh, is relevant to a carry gun that you'll have that people carry. Yeah, right. I mean, that's and that's kind of the that's kind of the point. So at this point, like, let's add let's add the magwell to carry optics. Let's add the 2011 to carry optics. It further differentiates it from production in my mind, uh, which is a, a little bit of a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And well, the problem with that is they change the bylaws let's just, let's so just, they can't change existing yeah. divisions. And then they had to change the bylaws again to edit <laughs> provisional divisions. And if they added it to carry optics, they'd have to change the right. bylaws again all within one year. Because, oh, right, yeah, I mean they they cut off their nose despite their face, right? I mean, the, the lack of ability to to look into the future in any sort of way is a, it's just I don't know. I'm at a loss for words. Like how how can you be this not smart? What else? So do you they see asked two other that? questions on equipment. In existing divisions, so this is the like I don't even know like I don't have words like to modify L10 to allow optics <laughs> and revolver. I think add revolvers. <laughs> what? So revolvers and can add optics in L10, and L10 guns can add optics. Uh, Forty-seven percent, uh, eleven hundred people. 1170 actually were in favor of this change. 1286 were not in favor of it. So 52% were not in favor. Uh, I don't think good, they've had good that point. many. I'm actually I don't think they had 12 up. or Hold on. I want to see what the activity like is for that. Hold on. Hold on. Compete in limited good, 10. Good point, Jeremy. <laughs> that, that'll be even funnier. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. It can't be much more no, than that. No, At no. least if you're looking at Total major matches. Maybe locals. For L ten. Just cause you twenty-four twenty-four number of activity. So more people voted in the <laughs> poll than actually participated in L ten in twenty twenty two. I think there's our sign to just go ahead and kill the division. Like we don't well, need that. Uh, that would be historical if USPSA actually uh, killed a division. We. <laughs> One thing Ipsic does right is they get rid of divisions oh, okay. that they don't like that don't make sense. They've done it to two of them in the last 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly right. Mm. Um, and yeah, that that's, that's a precedent we should follow. Uh, and if this is, if adding optics to limited 10 is going to save that division, then. Oof. So activity. So also let's be clear. Like activity doesn't mean uh, unique what people is there? that have shot limited 10. That could be multiple people shooting L10. So there were probably a multiple factor oh, yeah. of more people that voted in that poll than actually had shot L10. Probably because there were. Yeah, what, I was going to say it's probably ten times L10 more people voted in that than actually shot the division. Something like that. Yeah, that, probably so. That makes it so much fun. Probably here. so. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, next one is they talked about that, increasing the capacity really of production division point. to factory capacity. Now they had four choices on this factory capacity with no aftermarket base pads. It would still have to fit the box. 
And then they had factory capacity with base pads, aftermarket, or yeah, aftermarket or stock, but it still must fit the box. 15 round maximum magazine capacity, no limit on factory or aftermarket, and obviously still fit the box. And then the other one was no change, leave production alone. Any guesses on where everybody came out or what the poll came out at? Yeah, so 38%. Uh, I thought it was 15. So Most, total votes was, was 2594. Right? Uh, production had 15,000 activities in it, so that's probably pretty good. Uh, production uh, 15 round max was 38%. Next highest was factory capacity with base pads and aftermarket, but still must fit the box. So basically, you're looking at like 17 to 20 round production. That's 24% of the people. No change leave production alone was 22.86. And then factory capacity, no aftermarket base pads was 14%. So like 87% of the people want a change to production. That voted in it now just deciding where that kind of shakes out at the end 77 up to the board yeah i mean that's somewhat of a terrible poll because you asked too many you asked too many questions to get a definitive answer what people actually want there uh what do you guys think of that because this is this was really the most interesting poll I think of this. I, I honestly think that they should allow aftermarket I mean, base pads dead. as long as it fits the box. I think going to 15 is not going to fix anything. People are stuck on 15 because Ipsic is at 15. The pro the reason why Ipsic went to 15 was they used to have no limit. So manufacturers would create a special gun uh, that had a plus four extension on it and call it a factory mag. And they'd have a advantage over the other manufacturers. Now, with ha Ipsic not having a box or a mag limit or anything, right. manufacturers could go crazy. It, USPSA still has a box, so it has to fit in the box still. Yes, some guns, huh? They don't use it for Ipsic production, has a box. only standard. Ipsic has a box? Yeah, classic and standard. Oh, it's, uh, well, classic too. No, but that's why, under, that's why realize, the mag capacity got out of control for production. Ipsic. Okay. And they went to 15 to basically put all guns okay. on the same level. Now with USPSA having a box and the guns having to fit yeah. in there, there's a, there's a mag gauge at some, like you're only going to get a certain number of rounds in there with the gun in it also. So I think that makes more sense in 15. Yeah. Will there be some outliers? Yes, of course. There's outliers in every gun category out there. There's some guns in open that have that can hold 31 plus one. There's some guns in carry optics can that can hold 24 plus one. There's some guns in those are pretty much and limited that can hold 21 plus one also. So there are guns out there, yeah, 22 plus one. Wow, 22. See, at some point though, yeah, it's, that's maxed out because. Round. You have a limit on the magazine, just like you'd have a limit on the gun in, in the mag inside the box. It still had to fit. No one counts to 10 now. No one's going to count to 15 in the future. It's going to be on the competitors to police themselves, so it doesn't make sense. And I guess it. See, I kind of just I disagree a little bit with that, because uh, like I think the penalty is big enough. This, oh, this is gonna sound. This is gonna sound elitist. For the people that matter, what? what do you mean? The capacity will matter. <laughs> like if it's if it's like a, if you have like a fifteen round. Yeah, John Luke's like, did he really just say that? Like so, like having it like fifteen rounds. Like the the people that are competing to win no, the match, all. like they're not gonna get away with putting seventeen in there. Uh, so I got so, I, I think. I think 15, honestly, like if they have to change it and I think they feel like they have to change it, then I would, I would be more proponent of 15 personally. Cause it, it is a, like virtually any production gun out there, like you can buy it and just be like, Oh yeah, my gun holds 15. I can shoot this. 
if it's not a 365 or whatever the other want similar guns to that. I, it's a full size gun. I think it's a band aid. I think so. My biggest problem is 12% of the activity fees already right now are shooting limited minor. So that means people are loading up their production guns and to capacity to compete in limited. Now, will that bring some of them over to production? Probably. Will it bring all of them? No, I don't think so. I don't think the mag capacity is high enough. I think you need to go higher than that. Oh, you don't think? Mm. Okay. So, the, I mean, this also brings, a, I mean, a, another interesting debate in that is there anything to preserve in the sport and having lower capacity like the fact that production is a limited lower capacity division well i think i think is there capacity is a huge factor that? for the like a game mechanic wise you talk about high capacity is easier to shoot stages low capacity is harder now if you have somewhere in the middle right. like 15 or 16 right. or 17 whatever number you want to put out there yeah i mean you still have single stack and revolver sure. that are basically limited by their design so you have an l10 i guess now but that's going to be an optic division so <laughs> well, to, uh, honestly like i think 15 is an interesting number because in us with uspsa stage design limitations in the eight rounds in a position if you go to a stage if you go to a match that has a bunch of eight round positions and you've got 15 round mags you're going to have to make decisions, right? Do I try to cheat another target out of an array to so that I can That's also save a reload that's somewhere? That's also going to be a it is, I, yeah. load I think, fucking boring match. I, I, yeah, I don't locally, disagree, but I that's the reality that of matches. what you see a lot. But I'll be honest, I've, I've shot a lot fewer big matches in the last couple of years, so I can't. I, I can't comment too much. I, except Area 3. Yeah, there was a lot of that at Area 3 <laughs> this last year. It was just array after array. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do this year. 2023 is going to be eight round arrays <laughs> at five yards each for 14 stages. Now, 32 now rounds. Hold on. It, for 14 it actually stages. might be interesting if every single stage was was eight rounds, eight rounds. Eight Why? Rounds, and you had no deviation. Oh, it would be an anomaly. It would be an anomaly because it would be perfect. No, it wouldn't. Not at all. Not even close. That's an odd definition of perfect, but okay. <laughs> it would be perfect consistency, not a perfect match. It would be perfect consistency. Dumb. Dumb. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> Dumb. Well, that's, that's, some sort of, that's some sort of Ada raccoon Crack that's his OCD coming out, is, though, right? Is all I know that that's what's happened. Coming because there. he wants everything to like oh, match weird. up perfectly across everything. Yes, yes. All right. That's all the what's division. Wrong? Yes. What's wrong with a low 100%. cap division where you just throw everything in into one? If you want to run a 2011 with 10 round mags, go for it. You can run a single stack with 10 round mags. There'll be a, a differentiation between major and minor. Revolver, same thing. I mean, they haven't. I don't think there's a ten round. I think it's not the nine twenty nine is nine rounds, right? Of nine, is it eight? Okay. My eight. proposal for that is, eight. if you do eight. go to that eight. low cap division, if you're yep. shooting eight rounds. revolvers, you automatically get scored major no matter what. I mean, who cares about revolvers? That's <laughs> you're shooting. You're shooting thirty eight short colt major. Yeah, go look at the. <laughs> Oh, hold on. I still got it. Go here. look up go look up the activities on yeah. revolver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, revolver can be killed as far as USPSA's division. The the most successful current revolver shooter shoots one USPSA match a year, and that's nationals, and that's it. Yeah. Uh you can it doesn't do anything it doesn't hurt anything to keep it in steel challenge. Twenty two eleven as many divisions as it wants. It doesn't really affect anything in steel challenge. 22 for all of so almost yeah. as much as that's L10. the activity fees for all how many of those only all of revolver, revolver? no idea yeah. i probably more than l10 like all of them there are, like 
Yeah. I feel like L10 is the one where it's like you show up to a local, you don't really know what you have, but you've got – You've Wait got a second. Some, like you've got a 1911, but you got 10 round 45 mags, right? Jim was an L10 guy. You think that's cool, so you just put them in L10. I saw him today, by the way. Jim shot, shot a little bit of yeah. L10. Yeah. But not... I love you? Jim. Yeah. Jim's awesome. Uh, yeah. Hoppy knows Jim. Um, Jim's awesome. Uh, I mean, he... Jim was a production Dude, I think guy. I'm he still ranked like L10. number one L10 shooter like Long when they do that power ring and stuff. <laughs> Because of because when I had to shoot the Shadow Twos before they were legal, and I refused Are to you? lie on the form like every other manufacturer does, mm-hmm. and I had to shoot like an area match. That's my only area match. Yeah, L ten. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's smart. I mean, that's that's name recognition right there. But I mean, I think. Yeah, there could be a low cap division. Uh, I think there could be a com- a combining yeah. of production and single stack as we have mm-hmm. it now. And then uh, there, there, we by that use, logic, there could be something could be figured roll out. Roll single to make action that work. into carry optics. Boom. Because single stack and production shooters are going to be in the low cap division. Single action, throw it into carry optics. Because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. I mean, the triggers are definitely different. Uh, well, on average, yeah. I would say. So but if it doesn't matter, why are people wanting to go to 2011s? I, yeah. Why do they, they like it? They want to feel special. They want to feel special. Because they want to shoot hey, that. I they spend, like the gun. What? How much is the Prodigy? 1500 bucks? Or no, 18, bucks. I think, right? MSRP? MSRP. That street street price is, I think, like 13 I don't 14, remember on the Prodigy. It's really good. You You want to feel special. Right, you got this cool gun, and there's it is undoubtedly a special trigger, uh, 2011s in general. Um, but what are you talking spring- about? Oh, 1499 at Academy, the Springfield Army. Yeah, so, so they're high but it's cap. been proven, Nils, Mason, Shane Coley, they all shoot polymer guns in limited, it doesn't matter. Especially at the upper levels. If this is what we want to talk about, we're, we're trying. I think to that's unfair. All people. those people are limited on what guns they can okay, choose. But what's now, what's the point of USPSA? Now, hold to on. Prepare people for the for the world shoot, right? No, not not true at all. I mean, I, that's what I always thought it was. I thought USPSA was always meant. What'd you What'd you say, John Luke? For the world shoot. Wasn't that in like the mission statement or, oh, or was uh, something about c- no. competing what US and international matches or something, but it's such a there's only three hundred people that that affects in the total organization that have any interest in it. There's probably only a hundred that have real interest when you put financial needs into it. And then there's probably only seventy that actually will end up doing it right. at some point. Over a three-year span. Right. Yeah, that's a fair. Yeah, but if we want the sport the, the to world grow into to an Olympic small, level, small number, of right? People. We got to treat it like an Olympic level sport. Well, I mean, that's a whole different. That's a whole different debate as far as whether we want that or not. Uh, I would say the most of the current board. Matt can speak to this more than I can. Most of the current board would probably not care. I about think it's that. such I a mean, huge ask. We can't even. Like to see it, I mean, but we can't even get. I guess the simplest things done in the organization, like a approved budget, or not spend more than we have coming in right. before we should try to go to the Olympics, and that's. Well, From what I've heard, is was, it's all 100% about money also. That, keep, like, if you don't have money, able, out, either like right. paying for it to be put on or brought in by sponsors to sponsor it, they're not even going to think about doing it. Right. So I, I, I threw Olympics out because yeah. it's recognizable. Can you imagine? I'm saying maybe a global competition, international level competition that happens more often 
than the world shoot. It's about money, but I mean, you you come from the manufacturer world. Like, there's money. There's no money in USPSA go. for any manufacturer except for boutique 2011 type companies and maybe 1911 type companies. Otherwise, there's no money in it. And it, but there's and it, no trickle down effect. I mean, what are, what are the most popular firearms being sold today? True, there is there is pe- like a copycat factor that people want to shoot what looks cool that people are shooting. I think I think most of the guns anyway would be shot and picked up because of the looks or the advertising behind them, not because they are made for a specific sport. There's a lot of people in manufacturers that develop guns around the USPSA and IPSC rule set. That's 100% of a fact that happens. And well beyond and before I even was in the industry, it was happening. I just think we have far more leverage than maybe we recognize. Well, I mean, I think, uh, like Jared, Jared has said this a lot. Um, I'm not, and I'm not picking on Sasquatch. He said, he said this a lot that as far as like the shadows that CZ sells, like it's only a very, very small minority of them go to actual USPSA shooters. But I, I think what John Luke is saying, I think is, is actually true is that like, if shadows weren't as popular as they are in the competitive shooting world, if they didn't have that marketing for being yeah, there's definitely the a factor there, production yeah. gun. I mean, like it, it kind of is the production gun, I think right now uh, that, that people buy that because of it. They, they, they don't care that they yeah, compete or not. They just want to have the gun that you could compete with. Uh, and it, and it's a, it's proven like it's, well, if they're using this to compete with, then this is a good gun that I, I know that this is, the guys who are competing, who care the most about their guns, they say this is good. So I think creating this is a good. So then or, I know or, that I'm, I'm getting sorry, expanding gun. the competitive market as far as gun manufacturers go is a lucrative move. Uh, it, it's not right now, obviously, because you're entertaining thirty-seven thousand members, and you have to fight for um, you have to fight for their attention, right? But I do see a trend, at least at you know at a, a local level, that the people are finding interest in these things. You'd have to put a little money into it, of course, uh, but you could create a market, and I think that's where the real money would be. If you if we want to reduce this all down to making more money, well, how do you get people to buy more guns? I mean, all of us. I mean, Jeff doesn't have a backup gun yet. But <laughs> we probably have backup guns. So we're, ar- we're already on board for two guns, right? Places like Federal, uh, they're selling primers. There's some guys who shoot 1,000 rounds a year. How much do we shoot? I mean, like, even at the local level. There's, there's a 1,000 times 8, more people that shoot 100 rounds a year than the ones that shoot 1,000 yeah, rounds if, a year. What if you could convert yeah. that? Do what? No, no, no. I'm saying you have to expand yeah, the, the, the math market. for your arguments. So make there. more people competitive shooters who do consume ten thousand to twenty thousand primers a year, who do buy two guns every year, who have to buy five mags for each gun. Well, yeah, because it's hard. The the manufacturers course, don't it's want hard. That. The manufacturers want people to but, buy their but guns everything and put it is, in a safe. Everything is crazy until someone does. That's it. their favorite. That's their favorite customer. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I hear what Matt. Like, I think what Matt is saying is that, like, r- right now, well, from a USPSA standpoint, what you're proposing is an impossibility. Like, our matches are already full, and we don't have we don't have ways to add more ranges. Right, like, like adding ranges is a massive prohib- prohibition on our sport and places to practice. Uh, so, like from that standpoint, it's kind of it's an impossibility. And then from Matt's manufacturer side of it, the actual numbers in USPSA for the actual numbers of rounds fired and guns bought and used is is minuscule from that standpoint. Like we're not, we don't make a dent. So now it's it's up to from that standpoint. And their market Unless probably changed also. Though. I bet their market. Yeah, I kind of refuse to call them Cicado. 
I'm I'm more talking like the brands like MPA or well, I I'd mean, say Atlas, but I think everything I've heard heard from them though, most of their guns are sold Atlas. sold to people that don't compete. So they're on their way out. Yeah, how, I mean, they're how on their cool way of expanding. If if you buy an MPA, MPA and be can kind of head voucher for, for a one year membership with right? USPSA. So the problem with that is with the current people that are in the positions that could actually do that, think that the manufacturers should pay USPSA to put that pamphlet in there when it's, that's a hundred percent backwards that all those manufacturers have the customers for USPSA, not the other way around. Yeah, it is backwards. I mean, yep. I agree. And there were people that were in positions that could have got that done that just wanted USPSA to pay for the pamphlet to put in there. And it would have been done, but USPSA had it set up and would not budge on actually not charging the manufacturer to put it in. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're back. I mean, it's, it's circular. Just paying for the paper. Uh, I mean, the new marketing strategy today is offer something for free and you gain a customer. I mean, that's that's how it is. Even if it's just information, if it's education. What if you just, what if you partnered with somebody, put a pamphlet in there, literally had someone go log on, and then they got a free membership from that. But they had to get the digital magazine. So they really have no out of pocket added expense to the organization and they could add those members and then come up and six months they get a free six month membership not even a year so they get three magazines yeah they get to see their classification they could even get classified pretty easily in six months honestly in most parts the magazine of would be key yeah but digital only just the... digital only um it costs it costs way it, the Sending the magazines out are a huge loss on the organization. Yeah, but you know, if you send out a reminder in the email that the new issue came out, it would have to be it have to be more than one email or one reminder because the repetitive nature. No, they have it set up. They have it set up where you get yeah. you get reminders like thirty days out, then fifteen days out, then like five or something. They have that set up. <laughs> then yeah, do that. I mean, that's a. It doesn't even have to be six months. Let's say one match. I mean that. I mean that's. You got to give them some amount it. of time to to experience the benefit of it. And I, that could be a classification. So six months is yeah. Six months is more than enough. We yeah, can get six months is nothing. But six I mean, months is more than enough. Um, I I could. I mean, I. If I'm the, on the other side, I could see an argument for less but uh i think six months is manageable i think repetitive emails about um with with the issue uh with the uh magazine issue the digital copy would be perfect because eventually they're going to click on one of those emails they're going to see the pretty pictures and i mean it worked on me i mean the, i mean that's how i started right well, it was the, I mean, what, it was what did the, the, the free what did the pictures look like? Pro, the, you know, the, like? One problem with this. That's that's where I, I was like, what what do I do with my gun? Oh. Like, I, it's just sitting there doing nothing, and I can go to the range. But... That's that's you mean, the like free cool stuff videos? that USPSA and... should be providing uh, is that sort of stuff. But the problem with – yeah, the problem with uh, – Giving them the free stuff. Do you do you know how bad USPSA's membership numbers would look like if all the people that you could easily figure that out, out? You could yeah. have you could give them uh, their own tag for free they for that. six months. They could be like a, exactly. a Z, their USP, numbers. Z, Z, one, two, three, four, five, six. You know. Well, we somewhat. I mean, we kind of know. We can kind of infer those numbers. Well, they based lose on like seven thousand plus members a year. How many people they retain? You know what you got to do. That do pay. You give them, never come back. Uh, Six months ends. What do you do? You offer. Yeah. A so how many are they gaining? Membership. It doesn't have to be much of a discount. 
Well, I think I think a lot of people thing. that come in and saw a thirty-five dollar membership, they would think that's already pretty cheap. Oh, and and I think so. You would hook them by yeah, getting them really classified and that. like giving cheap. them like the carrot out there, like oh, you're whatever class you could keep going and progress. I think if you offer that classification system yeah. is so automated now that it actually doesn't yeah. cost the org much except for probably like hosting fees or some maintenance on it. But giving those so people a free membership and, and then in six months, like, Hey, your free membership's yeah. up. Do you want to renew? And then bam, they, even if they buy one membership off of that, that, that'd right. be hugely invaluable to the organization. The only problem I see with that is if yeah. it is six months and you need six classifiers, you need four. And, and say, oh, four? Okay, so, well, maybe you can make four matches. But some people really maybe four. want to take it slow. They only go to one every two months. Even better, they, they get class, two classifiers and they see what their percentage is. They're like, oh, man, I'm 55%. Maybe Are they going to go yeah, to the website? Do that. I mean, there should be an email that says, this is what you scored on the classifier. I mean, it, sh- it, it could be automated. There's you match results scored- emails that come out. I've never gotten a match result email. You haven't? No. Yeah. I mean, that'd be pretty easy to just, that'd be a pretty easy QR code to, I would think you could, you could create a QR code that I think has to be simpler scan than that. that took them, I mean, to, I, 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 to, took them to their member page. Simpler right? than I'm, I, th- so just for simpler my than own. a QR code. You, you would literally have phone? to have the percentage and then the letter next How to it. How can you make it simpler? In the email. Like, the percentage, the return on email campaigns, it's pretty low. Most people just end up deleting those kinds of emails. I mean, that's just how it is. You get how many emails a day? 200, 300 emails a day. It just goes by the wayside. How many, how many emails are in your inbox, Jamie? That are no, unopened? in your inbox. <laughs> Oh, I don't. De- I don't delete a lot of those. So, so how many are we talking? Extra. <laughs> uh, hold on. I have. I have twenty three hundred. So you guys don't get that. Is that what you said? Yeah. No. That's in my. Oh, that. Matt. That's in my. Matt, can you do any better? So I guarantee you guys uh, haven't no, I don't checked. Think I've seen I've that. It's some Actually. like notification in USPSA. Same thing. Do you get alerts for major matches that are happening in your area? You guys got to go in and check that off as a. Okay, uh, it should be default checked. Then. No shit, it no, should be. But the current people hard, that man. are in there, and then you check it off if you don't want it, right? Yeah, that right. should be default. Yeah, it's literally every everything, every spam email right. I get, you have to yes, unsubscribe that, to. Yeah, it. that's this, how it'd it be the same be. thing. Yeah. There's there's definitely opportunities there. Okay, I except that. <laughs> I, have I think yeah. Sixty one. Dude, I have zero. In my inbox. That's impressive. I have zero in one account. No, I just read them and then <laughs> or mark them as read. I don't have sixty thousand. You I delete 10, them all. And then delete them. Oh, I don't delete any. Oh, not not necessarily oh, unread, really? but how many messages total? Because you can yeah, just hit mark as oh, read and then oh, wait, that yeah. says unread. I will actually I in your unread. inbox. Yeah, I got ten thousand in my personal. Like fifteen thousand in my Gmail no, account. It, it says. Yeah, I've already started paying to store. No, those I emails. have. Hold on, you know, I was I wrong. Want to keep the receipts? I was wrong. I have sixty-one thousand. Sixty-one thousand unread. I have eighty thousand. That's eighty thousand total. Though. Oh, I got yeah. If 20, I go to promotions, promotions in mine, three thousand in social through the roof. Oh, you have them dippy well, up. Do, does does the organization think that would be annoying to get emails about? Uh, your I've match heard results? that I've heard that they give feedback that all the reminders are spam and to be like asked to be removed from those lists. Now that that could be like one or two people. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We don't. All they have know. to do is put an unsubscribe. But it button. has been said that that isn't. That's that true. Some members that's have said so that true. that's annoying and they shouldn't do that.
I'm sure they have. All right. All right. Again, all you got to do is put an unsubscribe. <laughs> I know that <laughs> That's easy. we're marketing geniuses. They changed a lot of the course rules also. Like let's stage, wrap this thing up. You can have now a short course with more than two shooting positions, medium courses. They took the shooting position thing out. They, I think those are fun. They modified uh, standard exercises, speed shoots, uh, uncasing area for PCCs. Uh, now they have scoring area of cardboard targets must be brown or tan, so we can no longer use like the white side of p- targets to score on or okay. do different colored targets. This is a big one. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. I is think some like a, matches were using white targets or blue or targets something? or something. I don't, I don't understand. Know. One of my locals did it. It was a. Uh... I mean, I guess it was kind of an element, but you could quickly adjust to it. I don't think it was that big a deal. I'm okay with that. So two big ones here. half size targets can now be used in any course of fire, and you can put hard cover and no shoots on them at any distance. So you could get someone to set up a 50-yard half size target with a no shoot on it. If you, it. It's within the rules now. Like, obviously, that course designer would be a asshole, and people would give him bad feedback. Yeah, you or can do swingers. A swinger. We shot a half-size Ipsic target at World Shoot on a swinger. Sw- no, no, it was open, but yeah, you could have hardcover on wow. it now. Yeah. With, it, but with hardcover on it. I think that seems like a really. Uh, I think it'll be neat. Idea, I think I think so, you'll get but. some extremes where people put yeah. like a twenty-five yard half half size target out there with hardcover, no shoot on it, to start out just to try to because it's new and people are trying it. But otherwise, it'll be fine. I'm going to incorporate them I into my stages. I still faith in stages. Um, I got, I got matches, two I stages with half-size targets in them. We'll see what our Area 3 does this year. I'm sure you will. No. Why would they? Is that Are they going to be eight-round arrays? Only if you're coming. But, well, no, if Jeff comes. Because you said they're all going to be eight-round yeah. arrays. You know, soothe his... Jeff can speed. shoot eight rounds in every <laughs> position if he wants. It just might be all on one target. <laughs> at 40 yards yeah. <laughs> all right all right True. so is it have they only half is size. it only half size targets or can you do like three quarter size or two thirds size <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay so that's the, next the bullets thing that's why big. can't i have a quarter so size this target? is no they're not come on Half size. If they're is too big for half, half size, too. Jeff, what did you think of that? Sorry, go on. It's it's Jeff. What did you think you of that? You get double stage in Puerto Rico. The you one get double on half the size scoring size. area. That was fun. Just busted. Is that what you said? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> busted. Yeah, it's great. It was busting. They were they were just cut oh, in half though, okay. weren't they? I if guess I, I missed it's the video that I'm thinking right. of, they were cut in half. Yeah, these are half these are half, half yeah, scale, scale literal scale down yeah. half. So, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the only reason they don't have like quarter or three quarters scale. is the rule book doesn't have sizes for those. Yeah, yeah. Scale down. They targets, do have a yes. size and diagrams for the half size targets. Well, you know how good they are with finances, so yes. let's probably That's not have them use a calculator. Figure that out. Uh, this one I don't like actually. Yeah. Uh, various size metal plates may be used in level one and level two matches only. However, metal plates must not be used exclusively. That doesn't change. So you can no longer use metal plates for level three matches. So the swing and steel plates that had area three are no longer legal in area three or level three matches, which I think is a mistake. And I think that's NROI not liking that plates usually turn or whatever and it's another way they're fixing the rule by not fixing the actual problem of the rule based on setup and design and how they use those plates and they're basically just eliminating it it doesn't make sense 
there were a ton of metal plates at World Shoot, and there were right. no problems with them turning over because they had protectors on the front, they had guards that, on them. Yeah, that's like it was all good. Mm. It, it's another way that. Yeah, I'm, that's to to make stuff simpler. That's dope. Say it. I, I I almost did, oh. but I didn't. I yeah. stopped myself. I think you're gonna say something. I know. Different, but... I gotta be nice. I don't want to be the sixth person. You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> they get sent to them though. If I say something spicy, they get sent to them. So they there's not to, that like, many people getting to get this far. Uh, yeah, that's that's dumb. That's okay. That's good. It, dude, if they made it through that section or we're talking about click funnels and multi-level marketing and yeah. they got here, for sure. you give them some spice. You're giving right? them something for free right at the end. <laughs> That's <true>. Stay, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe <laughs> down below. <laughs> so they, you can use a fixed time Full stage circle. on Full a medium circle. course of fire now. Oh man! Uh, Virginia count has to have exclusively targets on it. Cardboard targets, like with movement. Uh, something about sight pictures with PCCs. Dude, there's okay, there's, there's eight there's pages there's of really changes. Change there's eight pages of changes. Everything. Like, dude. Some... So, yeah, I was thinking about this as y'all were talking about all the other bullshit divisions earlier. I was like, if if you want to just, like, shoot this sport, like, yeah, just but shoot then, limited uh, or open. And then you don't yeah. have to worry about a lot, right? They haven't, they haven't touched Gucci those blocks. much yet. <laughs> it's coming. Like, it's just coming. shoot limited or open. Like, maybe single stack... <laughs> I mean, they're, we need they're to increase the weight on a single stack, stack, I think. But a limited or open, you should be good. So this is one a myth yeah, for in yeah, ROI. I, I think that. they updated the definition yeah. of compensator yeah. because Sig came out with that that slide comp gun, and so they changed it from like mm-hmm. fit, barrel must be fitted to muzzle yep. end of a barrel to must be integrated in the slide or barrel. To counter muzzle rise so now what's going to happen is someone's going to create a frame mounted comp that basically goes right up right up to the edge of the slide and acts the same as those yeah those, or have an extended barrel inside of that so it acts just like that anyway like if yeah. they just would have made that definition of a compensator is something that compensates the the gun from moving based on gas or something. It would have covered any innovation that came out in the future. Right. Right. Holes at the end of the gun to forward of the muzzle have yeah. to express yeah. gas anywhere other than the what the bullet travels yeah, through. It's just another miss that they did. Right, they run, the so straight, what happened is they came the up with all these rules. They released them at the end of December and they rushed out all the questions and the surveys. They self-admitted that the questions weren't wrote in the best way. Um, and now they're changing stuff that at some point someone's going to come in here and they're going to have to change it again. Mm. Like the compensator thing is going to happen. Now that people see how effective the slide comps are, it's going to happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's eight ch- eight pages of change logs. Yeah. These all these rules change start it's, on March first. So, basically, any ma- yeah. major match that's happening, you can see half size targets with hardcover no shoots. Uh, different stages. You can have an eight position, twelve round stage if you wanted at this point. Which I think that's good. I think the the restrictions with having to people have not cut through fault lines and stuff will make that probably prohibitive, but it could be done. Yeah, I, I just I mean like there's there are a sprinkling of good changes in there. 
like honestly, like there there is a sprinkling of good changes, but for as a whole, like why like we don't need eight page like you are not advancing the sport with eight pages of changes. Like I'm sorry, but like how like if if you weren't already in this like it's confusing for me, and I understand the sport fairly well, and it's confusing to me. Can you imagine if you are that outside observer? Like, well, what do I, what gun should I get or what should I shoot? Or how do I, like, what are the rules of the sport? <laughs> Who knows? Sign up, shoot it one month. The next month, the rules might not, be, to be, er, to be fair the though. The rules have been very yeah, solid for two years at this point. There's been hardly any changes. Right. Two years. That's a long time for them. You have to like congratulate them for that fact, yeah, right? Right. Yeah, we're giving out accolades yeah. left and right. Let's. Uh... Yeah, so I think. Yeah, years? when they did the flashlight changes. So the last actual non-equipment changes were proper calibration, stuff? and that happened in like September of twenty. Oh, yeah. What twenty one? Yeah. And now in March of twenty two, they have. Half the rule book's changing. So I guess that hasn't been that long. Sorry. <laughs> Equip- <laughs> equipment hasn't changed for a while, though. <laughs> haven't, uh... Uh, interesting thing yeah, from the board meeting, that, yeah. uh, Area 3 is not assigned changing. on any committees. Oh. Uh, so that's interesting. So Area 3 is going to have no representation on any committees, no matter who the person is. Oh, wow. Uh, it ended tonight. It ended tonight. So they should know. Yeah, USPSA is, is probably going to get mo- notified tomorrow. Finalized? And the candidates, in my election, oh. I was notified the day after. So it ended on a Sunday, and I was notified on Monday, like before noon. So whoever's the new Area okay. 3 director will know by noon. But they uh, okay. They did not so it's decide 20th. on a start date for that person. So probably they'll decide, depending on who it is, of when that start date will be. It can be up to 60 days after the election. So if they want to keep Kevin in there and not either bring Scott or Luke in, gotcha. they can wait another two months. All right. We'll see. I mean, maybe they'll surprise us, right? I would guess that that's what they'll do. Be my guess. Maybe. I mean, we can always. I'm not holding my breath, but you can always hope so. All right, Jeff. Has that been a good podcast? I I hope for heavens that Potato made up for out last there week. is happy. Like yeah. he has, he can go on a long freaking walk with his dogs. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, we've got. I think every once in a while, it's not a bad now. thing. That's uh, an hour and forty two minutes. Days. You know. Of a of a long pe- of a long podcast, yeah. You could even say it to was what? a good thing. not a bad thing. Yeah. yeah, you can even say it was a good thing. One thing I didn't talk <laughs> about was the financials because they were not in the minutes and they did not vote on a budget for twenty three yet either. So, oh gosh, uh, yeah, but it'll probably be May because it's not even in the uh, agenda you for want the to come February on again and meeting talk financials? either. So. It'll be at least till March till they actually talk about that. And we won't see the minutes until probably oh, April geez. at that point. So, okay. 